Hello and welcome to another episode of Next Generation's First Generation, a watch along podcast where we view commentary and general shenanigans and hijinks uh, as we review our favorite Next Gen episodes. Today we have with us Mr. Patrick. Hey everybody. Hey Patrick. So what are we doing? Watching the host today? The host. The uh, the host with the uh, with the most. Da, 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 the host the most da, 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 da. No, no that doesn't work but it's the, uh, it's the introduction <laughs> of, a, of an alien race whose dividends are still paying off even in new trek the trill mm-hmm. that's right but this episode just says the trill and concept in name we'll notice a lot of things are different but oh very much you remember yeah. the first time we met the Cardassians they had those hip upper lip uh beard or mustache thing. yeah those and the weird helmets like the <laughs> romulans did the first time they showed up yeah okay so um it should be right around may 13th for you this episode released in 1991 way back in the day uh so go ahead and queue up your queue uh your viewing devices we'll give you the countdown and then you hit play so five four Three, two, and play. Dr. Beverly Crusher, Log There Star she Star is, Mr. Mrs. Yes, Miss? Yeah, Crusher. Yep. Talking about missing her kid, and now she is in a new relationship. Mm. And it's it's kind of funny because it's like she gets to do this. She kind of got permission to do this finally after um, seeing Picard and his uh, his old flame sharing a breakfast together she's like you know what forget about waiting around for this guy right <laughs> oh there's the oblivious co-worker yep walking in on an elevator kiss what's funny is that it's not like they couldn't she couldn't tell him like hey data we were we were making out but he's like oh yeah that happens to me all the time uh I'll uh, get out on the next floor <laughs> <laughs> yeah like I, am on a, I am on a starship where people make out <laughs> now apparently gates mcfadden is actually seven months pregnant while filming this episode yeah i heard about that so it's nice did. that you know she already has a jacket as part of her uniform they probably brought in the jacket um oh no they she's had the jacket since day one if i remember yeah not since day one i don't think she wore it in the first episode of the show but ever ever after she got to have this jacket on so they just kind of did a pull the hood over data's eye conversation there they were just a couple minutes of uh, social dancing around data mm-hmm. it's funny to think that you know that baby is in its 30s now Wow. Holy freaking smokes. You you are correct. So they are in quarters. Oh, there's our Trilly Trill. So we know the Trill as our spotted, uh, spotted leopard print friends. And uh, this guy, it's a little different. Um, yeah, we want, they, want us, they want us to see it as being uh, kind of sinister here. Mm-hmm and the evil music yep and i don't think i ever saw dax use one of them (laughs) a calm down the symbiote deal (laughs) well this goes into the original uh being aliens is bad um yeah I'm, i'm really tired of that oh they're hiding something they're the imposter they fooled us and uh it just it doesn't uh, it doesn't sit well. No, there's a really good. Um, I know I'm always bringing up Trek novels, but man, there's a really good Star Trek Picard novel that's also a, yeah. a Titan book about an alien species that are um, what's it called? Actually, robots. Oh. And because they're because you know when the Picard and when the TV show Picard comes out, um, Star Trek or Starfleet is not trafficking with uh, synthetic beings at all. 
though these this species has had to completely conceal the fact that they're all that they are all artificial life forms. It's really a good book. Hmm. Artificial. Uh, now, is that the reason that they're hiding their artificialness is just to kind of blend it with everybody and not get, uh, I guess, ridiculed or or worse? Yeah, to get get killed. Because remember, yeah. uh, because of the attack on the Utopia Planitia. That's right. Okay, gotcha. they said they weren't gotcha. going to deal with uh, synthetic life forms like at all. Hmm. Ha. I'm reading here that the story was um, considered a squirmy worm story. <laughs> I do like the design for the symbiote in this. That they kind of dulled it down. Yeah, it's got some nice colors to it. Uh, da, 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 da. So it's it's interesting. I'm glad they revisited this character. Actually, it turned into one of the... Um, <clears throat> It, it turned into a great species, as you said, and a great conduit to explore um, things with our later Dax symbiont. Uh, so I don't remember on Deep Space Nine them ever shaming or hiding the fact that the symbi- symbiont existed. Is that correct? That is correct. I mean, they've had a couple of years to you know really get used to the Trill concept, but... <clears throat> But, you know, what's her face? Um, Dax would have had to have been at Starfleet Academy at this time. Um, I want to say that they say in that first episode, she and Bashir are both 26 or 27. Mm-hmm. So this is only not even two years before that. Before that. So they're you know, 24, 25. So they're probably, she's probably an ensign somewhere. Dax is probably, well, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> when, when you're a 300 year old trill and you get into well, a new body, Zia. well, they, well, they uh, just kind of let you carry over your rank and title. I'm thinking not, but no, I, yeah, not, not Dax specifically, but Jadzia is somewhere being, uh, it's um, a lot of, a lot instance. of, smooching and kissing in this scene oh yeah holy freaking smokes so so this kind of goes into the whole the uh, the the guest visitor relationships are always steamier than the on ship relationships true because you don't have to worry about getting used to each other you can have all of the excitement and then they just go away yep oh here comes Port. Nice knowing you. Wow, that's a great uh, re- me remastered uh, planet there. Yeah, I haven't Holy been crap. watching these on um, the DVDs like I had originally started out to do. So I'm missing, you know, what they've changed about stuff with the Enterprise. Um, I love Troy kind of wanted to have a second with Crusher to talk about Odan here. And Data's standing right there, and it's like, oh, I guess we can't. I think, though, we've established that you can get Data to not repeat things. Well, Data's not much of a gossip. I mean, you can tell him to clam up, and he will. So a a little pot uh, reveal is that when Odin came in, introduced himself to the ambassador, the ambassador said, oh, I knew your father very well. I hope to have a good working relationship with you. So, yeah, and this is different from what the eventual Bible for the Trill is, is that they wouldn't pretend to be father and son to one another. Mm-hmm. They'd be pretty open about what it is, how it is that they work. The information you sent. If I understand correctly, the people of Alpha Moon have found a way to tap directly into the And it's funny, this is, you know, they go right from having the story with um, Waxana and the guy that's a peace negotiator to this peace negotiator who rather than having to die after a certain period died a natural death but had to continue to work on the same problem that stinks because um this this storyline could have been an entire season because the conflict on this planet is that they have two moons one of which uses an energy source and is killing people on the other 
And the planet here, which is where this woman is from, doesn't want to choose sides in this conflict. Mm -hmm. Which is like, by not choosing sides, she is choosing sides. And Picard should be on top of that. He's like, if this technology that these, these other people are using is killing the other people, you are choosing sides because you're you're letting them use a technology that's killing other people. Mm-hmm. But we don't ever get it, get it. We don't ever get into that. No, not at all. Yeah, I'm looking at Mr. Odin here and I can't stop thinking about the I can't believe it's not butter guy. <laughs> oh, is that Fabio? Fabio? Yeah. yeah. Fabio hey. used to be a big playground joke when I was a kid. Oh, this is the 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 cold read from Deanna. She says she sees fluctuations in his emotion. Wait, what what does that even mean? Poor. What? Oh, yeah. They're on the Enterpri- They're in the Enterprise Spa. Yeah. They're getting their nails done. Time, time for some gossiping. And of mm-hmm. course, uh, she's got her tray there covering her. Uh, Pregnancy tummy. Is that the collard knife astringent you have on your? <laughs> and there's a bullion back there, but it is not mott. Guess so. Oh, we like it when bald guys cut hair. Yes. <laughs> I wouldn't mind having a bald barber. I didn't know you even came in here. So this is this is Deanna's kind of razzing her for for uh, gussing it up. Looking pretty. She wants information though. It's like, who are you who are you getting pretty for? Who could she possibly who could it be? It's like they're you're in love. This isn't the first time these two have kind of sat around and talked about boys. No, and they always do it in kind of a stupid way, like the aerobics one and Oh god, that was terrible. <laughs> but they I don't, don't even... really the, what 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 was that relationship about anyway? The aerobics thing. I don't know. I don't even remember. I just remember they were doing aerobics together. But you don't see them be that social, really, Beverly and uh, and Deanna. Because when it came, when it comes down to it, when you know the real the real raw emotions came out, when Deanna lost her um, her powers, mm-hmm. she and uh, she and Beverly did not get along particularly well. It, but it's weird when they do talk together like this. Uh, it's it's always super awkward. I remember in one of the Star Trek movies, um, Deanna said to Beverly, something just really weird. It's like, don't you hate it when your boobs sweat? And I'm like, oh, my gosh. Really? Oh, yeah. When they're, this is when they're, it's in uh, Insurrection. Yeah. They're getting just, younger on the planet. And don't your boobs feel firmer? Or something like that. And I'm just thinking to myself, man, who's writing this stuff? Yeah. A middle schooler. I know, I know. White men. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. <laughs> what, Brandon's a guy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah this, uh, the, the guy in the previous episode where they were doing the exercise thing, that was the bears on wormhole negotiating episode. Okay. God, look at that hair. It's beautiful. So his so the deal with this guy is, and I think they changed this about the trill too. It's not really safe for his symbiote to go through a transporter. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, he wants to take shuttle everywhere. If I yeah, correctly. Which you know, Pulaski did that, and McCoy didn't like to be transported. Basically, anybody that has you know a, a hard understanding of uh, medical issues, <laughs> I like that. You know, when we go back to see earlier Trek, a transporter is more of a means to an end than it is a, uh, you know, an every, t- an, you know, get everywhere type deal. Right. And you can, and you can only have the, uh, something's wrong with the transporter episode so many times. Yes, I'm sure that's true. Well, shall we oh, have- remember Tuvix. Captain, you yep. know her better than I. Haven't quite made oh. it to that episode yet. Okay. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> Odin's Odin's kind of getting intel on Beverly. 
course not. He's asking the wrong guy. <laughs> yeah. Well, I only carried her dead hu husband's body to her front door rather than the hospital. Right yeah. He's got a God, poor Picard. I mean, not really, because he's an adult and he's in control of what he does and doesn't do. But so Beverly left to become, you know, head of Starfleet Medical um, mm -hmm. in, in season two. Yes, but she came. But she came back, I am and it's not just because of her son. It's because she likes all of the people that she works with. Um, so much so that we're going to see later on in this that if Riker has a magic slug inside of him, she she'd do it with Riker. <laughs> well, she that means she's just a psychosexual. She's yep. more into the person than the body. Now, I wonder why that, that shuttlecraft was putting off a little bit of smoke. Did you see that in the yep. back? I think that's the foreshadow that something's wrong. Mm -hmm. Well, the other foreshadow that something's wrong, and I'm stealing this from um, The Greatest Generation, is any time that Data is giving you updates on what's going on with the shuttlecraft, something terrible is going to happen to it. <laughs> Oh, uh, they're about to. to oh, uh, the they're about to get shot at. No I also hate that it's like Alpha Moon is the one that's you know has all of the uh, all the technology, and Beta Moon is the one without it. It's like why why give them those designations? What I mean, one and two would be fine. That's what they usually do with both planets, but it's like. You know, greater and less, you know, alpha well, and beta is more like greater and less than. Well, look at beta zero. The name of your planet is uh, two, z uh, two zero or B zero. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know. Those are some very fascinating 1990s uh, special effects here. Yes. Oh, there we go. So he just brought it out. You transport me, I'll die. You know, we have DNR requests now. You know what that is, right? A DNR yes. order? Yes. So I wonder in the future if they would have a trans uh, do not transport order, uh, a DNT order. Oh, I'm certain that you would. Anytime that you were around the technology. And also, you know, there would just be people that wouldn't go places where a transporter was the only option. Um, hey, it's Nurse Ogawa. She's back. Yeah. Now, we've <laughs> seen her before already. Oh, yes. We, every time she shows up, we have a conversation about have we seen Nurse Ogawa before. Yeah, go figure. I must I must have a secret crush on her or something. What the hell's going I think on? We all have a secret crush on her. Hey, I don't remember this lump. Where'd this one yeah. come from? I, I know about the other bulge, but Mr. Uh, Mr. So-and-so, where's what? Like, was that there? there, like, when we were, you know, intimate? It was the only thing that was there. <laughs> so, Mr. I gotta look up this guy. He, he just intrigues me so much. Um, it's weird because, like, so, so the original rules for the trill... Were not that they were in a that, that they were in a as symbiotic a relationship as they as they are you know in in the modern trek it was that the the body is just a vessel it doesn't really have any memories of its own everything is the symbiote what can i do now it's like the symbiote is just kind of the kind of a library you can draw what you can draw on it's like the memory the memories are there but you're still your own person Curzon Dax is not um, Jadzia Dax is not uh, Ezri Dax they're three very different people well you're an amalgamation of personalities yeah it's so this what what's going on here is it's more like um, the doctor from Doctor Who Mm, yes. Where you look, you look different, but you're still exactly the same person. Odon is the one who negotiated. So our our guy Odon here is played by Frank Luz or Luz L U Z, 
And this dude, at the time of filming, is 41. So huh. he's, he's our age. Yeah. That's, I never thought so I'd. He's, so he's 71 now. Yeah. I never thought I'd make it to that old. I mean, looking back as a kid. Man, I mean, either. You know, I'm I'm on the cu- I'm on the cusp of forty, and somebody we know who had a birthday yesterday is on the cusp of forty now. And oh, here we go. Riker steps up to the plate, and this is so bizarre because so later on, Crusher just can't with like. Symbiotes and a hot woman, but it's like, yeah, I guess so. When it's in, uh, when it's in Riker. Well, it would have been even more. Uh, it would it would make the comedy a little easier to have had Will known about the relationship between Beverly and Odin before he volunteered to transfer the, the slug into his gut. So instead of being yeah. into him on the turbo lift, it was Riker. Because <laughs> you know it, Riker would just kind of do some tongue-in-cheek gag, like, oh, I see you guys oh, are yeah. tonsil hockey there. And that's what I, why I'm saying this could have been a multi-part storyline, is because you could have gotten into how how is Picard about that? How is, uh, how is Troy about that? Um, so yeah, our trail looks very different here. A lot more. It's beautiful. Uh, it is. It's got some, you know, peacock kind of stuff on it. Uh, looks like they uh, put in some hyper colors. I don't know if it's because of the remastering or if those are just really vivid colors on the model. Mm-hmm. Some beautiful translucent blues and greens and oranges. Oh. I'm surprised Riker's awake for this procedure. You know, if I had a worm come into me like that, I think the first thing I'd want to do is go to the bathroom. Probably. If it's wiggling around in your gut, pushing they things. Probably have him on a, they probably have him on a catheter. <laughs> I was thinking about that if for those long, like, 72 or or 56-hour shuttle trips. You think that they just set the computer to kind of beam your waist out of you. <laughs> I was going to say... Well, as we now know, you know, the replicator, you know, makes makes everything out of uh, human waste. Yep. So, <laughs> you got a big bag of hot apple pie down here <laughs> <laughs> under under Riker, just going to stick it in the uh, the replicator. Mm-hmm. Oh. So, is he going to have some Riker and some Odin, or is he going to be all Odin? I can't remember. If this was now, it would be some Riker and some Odin. Now it's all Odin. Oh, man. There is no right. There is no Riker. So, right now, Riker is technically gone. <laughs> but <sighs> would you be okay, like, dating somebody? That looked exactly like a coworker, like exactly like them. Wait, say that again. Say you had, you know, that you had a coworker, mm-hmm. and you started, and you fell for somebody that looked exactly like that coworker. They weren't them, but they look exactly like them. Mm, I'd, Would you be I'd, comfortable with that? A little bit. I mean, I'd have I to. That, yeah. I, I need some time. I need some time to just sit with it. In 1991, there's more ethical problems with, you know, have being in a same-sex relationship or perceived ethical problems with being in a same-sex relationship. But I think that, you know, if so, you know, say you you knew somebody that died and got a brain transplant, and we're putting the you know again in the body of somebody else that you knew and then you started a relationship with them it would be really weird yeah um but no sign of rejection that's good i i think the the thing 
the problem about getting to know people is that you have obviously the outside, what you see, what they project, how they carry themselves, the body language. That's that's a whole person right there. You can identify with that. But then you find out who they are, what they like, what their interests are, what they hate. And, and it's almost like if you enjoy the you, you kind of enjoy hey this is a good looking person and their personality is wonderful now in this instance the looks and the personality are completely gone and i think about uh what you were what you were saying about the 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 uh, other podcast that was reviewing this uh what was the name of that podcast uh the greatest generation where where what did you say what if it, it they were saying like what if the the trio was someone less attractive no oh, no that was for a different episode oh that was for a different episode okay but yeah. but where i'm going with this will still apply is that i don't think that looks really make much of a difference in the world of the trill because if they're so used to recycling these um symbionts throughout then you're going to be more into what they think, what they say, what their ideas are. Um, so that's why I say it's kind of a culture of psychosexuals. But I'm more, I'm more curious as to why, why Beverly is like, well, okay, I can do that. I can, you know, it can be, it can be riper and I can still, you know, have a sexual relationship with it. And not, um, well, if it's a woman, I can't get past that. And I mean, I get, I get it in the sense of, in reality, it's 1991, and we're not going to go there. We're going to go, you know, same-sex relationships are a total deal-breaker. But I would find just so much more, you know, what, you know, what if my girlfriend turned into my boss? It's a lot. It's a lot weirder to me than. <laughs> well, then you got that power struggle coming in behind you. Yeah. So, so uh, we have another girl talk conversation, and it occurred to me why these two always talk to each other about girl talk, and it's because there are no other women on the cast, except I mean, for Guinan. No, but like regular characters, Guinan's a guest star. I, I'm, I'm talking about like every day, day in, day out. It's it's mostly men, and so you kind of have to folk. You kind of have to force these two women to talk to each other just because they they are the only ones. Right. It's uh, and certainly and certainly the only uh, senior staff too. Mm -hmm. I think we got a little bit of that in Deep Space Nine as well because it was Dax and Kira. Now, I was just doing some reading here. You remember in the scene where they were in the beauty salon? Yes. The beautician is an actress named Vanessa Grayson, and she is actually a stand-in for uh, Marina Sirtz. I don't huh. know if you do that or not. So it's kind of neat to see the stand-in right there next to her in the same scene. Um, and then she also played a Dabo girl on Deep Space Nine, apparently. All right. All right. So now, now Beverly's processing the emotions of, you know, I wish I hadn't had a relationship with this individual. He's changed. It's not. It's not the same. I am very unentertained by this plot line. Well, it should be. It should be a lot more interesting ethically. Mm -hmm. And this is the other thing: is it's like okay. Did they make a shipwide announcement and say, okay, everybody, uh, Riker is not Riker anymore. He's Odan. Because it's like, this is a crowded 10 forward right now. And basically, Riker just stumbled in in a, in a row. <laughs> he kind of yeah. looks like he's been day drinking. Yeah. <laughs> oh, she's talking about her father. I think. Yeah. We we don't really get to know much about her dad, if I remember correctly. We do get to see him in a flashback. Oh, cool. Much later on, yeah. 
I keep thinking that Christopher McDonald plays him also, but it's I, it's not. But he's in the, um, you know, he's Starfleet. He's in the uniform from the movie eras. Oh, and she looks at him. She wants to give it a try. God, everybody in 10 forward is going to be like, what in the name of God is going on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, we sorry. We didn't put that notice out to everybody. You'll just yeah. have to go along with it. Representative to the two wounds of Peliar Zell have agreed to come on board. Mm. The new ambassador. I, I'm actually more interested in the the politics of this rather than the the slug in the gut story right is that the same robe he was wearing in 10 forward no i think so yeah surely to present yourself in this condition is not going to help our cause i promise you captain they will never know that i have oh man so now he has to explain why he's the same person yeah I believe the uh, the actress there in the purple, the purple alien was in Voyager. Okay. Off the top of my head, I remember stumbling across that. That is correct. She was a formidable woman. I the utmost respect. Hmm. And who was it who spoke for Alpha so long ago? Uh, here we go. So this is the validity yeah. check. Uh, Validity test. Hey, are you really who you say you are? Tell me something only I would know. You poop with one yeah. cheek on the seat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm guessing. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, you don't need to say any more. Yeah, he's. This is a guy. <laughs> yeah. Young man and the iron willed woman of Beta Moon. They agreed to trade places for a week. Oh, they actually gets the he gets to you know sit differently and now I wonder how that did for the uh, the actors back there because we know he has to always sit awkward. Yep. He's got that fluffy, sexy hair. Actually, what would be more shocking if if uh, Odan said, "You know what? I don't like beards. I'm going to shave." <laughs> Yeah. True. See, that would have been, that would have made sense. You know, he could shave and then ask Beverly to do a hair stimulant, and so you see this this Fabio Riker walking around with these beautiful locks. <laughs> now that, that would be cool. It, they, yeah, they didn't. I'm sure their their filming schedule is so fast they didn't have time to do it because they might. You know, do scenes out of order and things, and need to have Riker have the exact same hairstyle. These Star Trek negotiations are so funny. The stand-up posturing, and then someone says yeah. something very obvious. Oh, that sounds like a good idea. Let's do that, and then they walk out. I love that. Yeah, the uh, the resolution last time was very King Solomon ish. Was like, you're going to do a Freaky Friday <laughs> and do each other's jobs for a week. I can administer an immunosuppressant that could help relieve the symptoms, but it can't correct the underlying cause. There is a foreign organism in his body. Oh, so his body is rejecting the symbiont. Yeah. Did did they ever talk about? I missed it because I was really bored about. Um, Beverly's <laughs> feelings. I'm sorry, I don't care about Beverly's feelings. I wish I did, but eh. Um, did they ever talk about uh, if this was going to be a permanent change for Riker or just a temporary one until a it was always supposed to be a temporary one? They were set there, they have a replacement trill on the way to take okay. over. All right. It's like, yeah, Beverly should have just straight up asked, like, is it a woman? I'm like, no, it's, you know, it's, it's a big guy for, for Hundo. Just coming in to. <clears throat> no, please. All right. So here's the real test Beverly says no. 
and the Riker character just kind of pulls back. Okay. So the next question will be, who makes the next move in this relationship? Because it's not over yet. And if it's Riker and he makes the move, even after she said no, um, do we get all judgy about that? No. Riker has no control over what's going on. It's all out Um You basically... Um, once you... Again, they just went into this with the, the trill not really knowing how they work. I think the rule should be once you, once you know how how uh, how everything works you have to you know write up kind of laws about how you act mm. when you're a, you know when you're an ambassador your goal should not uh should not be like getting nookie on your transport ship yeah uh i mean really there was no problem with it when he wasn't inside the first officer of the ship but they talked about how they were scared because he was in the body of a Starfleet person that um, the people on the planet wouldn't trust him. They didn't call Starfleet there to negotiate it. They called that. They called Odan specifically to negotiate it. Starfleet just transported him there. Mm-hmm. Starfleet, could me- Starfleet could mess things up. Oh, they mess things up all the time. That's yeah. the irony is that yeah. you have good captains and evil, evil admirals. Yep. Oh, she's looking at the flower that he gave her before, just before he died. That's now okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna dial it back here. So Riker or Odan goes to the food replicator and says, "Make me this tonic." And the, mm-hmm. the computer says, "No, I've got nothing on record. Please provide a molecular structure." Can't you just say, okay, take some vermouth, fill the yep. cup about halfway, I I should see how it, it, doing. because then then you could have like an interactive chef. It's all ingredients that the computer doesn't have. Again, they went in, they went into this. It's so weird because they had to have had um, some kind of first contact with the trill, where they didn't learn any of this stuff about them. Mm-hmm. I would assume what you would assume would happen, especially if an ambassador from a mostly unknown race comes on board. They could be like, "Hey, you know, uh, if you're not bringing food with you, we've got these replicators that we can program with some recipes that you like." You know, before we take off, but uh, you know, they didn't do that. That's good. Yeah, it it makes only sense like you'd kind of bring your menu with you, like everything on a USB card. Just a card, USB card. I am from the 90s. Yeah. So I missed some squishy stuff between Riker and and uh, Beverly. I was too busy talking. <laughs> she's still in. Yeah, she's still into him. She's still into Odin. Doesn't yeah. matter. Doesn't matter that he's her boss. No. Yeah, you're right. Effects of the medication are wearing off faster every day. Isn't there some rule where you're not supposed to fall in love with your patients? Like Nurse Ogawa, he, he wasn't her patient before. What is her patient? If she, had, now? if she had started as yeah, if he had started as as her patient, that would be one thing. But you know, they probably again, this would be a story you could flesh out. They probably met when he was being brought on board. They had a welcoming ceremony. They clicked and you know figured they only had so much time together. Got into bed pretty quick. He'll manage. He's going to take one for the team. You know, this reminds me of uh, the Sarek episode where he comes by and oh, yeah. Picard is Katra and you just have Picard oh, yeah, that, raging that in his quarters. Sure. But it, also... It's, oh, the inverted, it's inverted. That plot is an inverted of this, if that makes any sense. So instead what? of... Riker will not survive. So well, instead kind of, of... Go ahead. Sorry, I keep interrupting you. Um, go ahead and finish your Sarek thought. Yeah, so I'm, I'm wondering then, so you have a telepath who puts his emotions in another person so he can t- conduct business, and then you have a slug who puts his emotions into another person so he can 
uh, conduct negotiations. The only difference is one where they need it and one where they don't, and they're just they're pushing the they're they're pushing the emotional creature either into or out of um, the plot just to satisfy whatever drama is going on. I think last time too it was Beverly that was holding on to Picard when he was um, going through his uh, Sarek Katra phase. There. Yep. So well, now here you have a woman who <laughs> is seeing too many people that she loves kind of going through these medical crises. Well, she, it's interesting because, you know, I made that, that line about her just jumping into bed with Odan, but she's also, she is in love with him. She is in romantic love with him. It's not a, it's not just a sex thing, which yes. is why she's able to transfer that to Riker as well. Um, th- but I just, you know, I know I've said it a million times. It should be a harder bridge for her to cross to get to Odan being inside Riker than it is for her to cross that bridge to Odan being inside of a woman. Oh, he collapses on the bridge. Down he goes. They will not war. All right, so he won. They're not going to go to war. Roll credits. Yep. So now, do we kill the symbiont or do we kill Riker? <coughs> Picard can't do either with good conscience. Mm-mm. He's he's gonna let fate decide. Yep. With the way Picard's morality works, allowing them to both die is actually the better choice, because he has to show he has to show the Trill that he did everything he could to keep the symbiote alive, and if that. And if they're and if the symbiote is dead and Riker's alive, it doesn't look like he acts in good faith. I am so glad Picard didn't just tap the glass right there. No. <laughs> yeah, you'd be tempted to. I, I mean, the, the positioning and the camera angle were perfect. It just makes like a squeaky noise. It's like, oh, it's imprinted on you, Captain. Which is another Star Trek episode. Yeah. Two of them. Enterprise and Next Gen did a thing where you have some young female gift to a diplomat and the main character stumbles upon them and is like, well, I was gifted to so-and-so, but I will always be for you or some nonsense. Yes. Good. Bring him in. <laughs> Worse, like, you don't know. It's a lady. Yeah. It's a lady. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I am Kario. I am to become host to Odan. Oh, she looks disappointed. It's like, I, yep. I didn't. Now, here would have been a great opportunity to have the first on screen lesbian kiss right here. And they missed it. No, nope, they did it. At least it happened in Deep Space Nine, got one of the first ones. Right. And even then they had to fight like hell for it. Well, I don't think I don't think next gen could be that daring to tell you. No, truth. they I mean they played with it that, that idea a few times with the uh what is it, the non binary planet, which is still a bad episode because it's like non binary does exist in human society and they straight up say they don't. Mm. Yeah. Well, you know, we we were still learning a lot of things back then. Oh yeah, and you yeah. know, and again, TV only let would only let you do so much in 1991, as well. Um, and at least, um, you know, it's a, it's a it's a tab it's a taboo. Um, it it sucks because you hope that that's gone away in the. Uh, 24th century mm-hmm. and that's why they've had to do so many uh retcons to go back and say like oh no there were there were gay people all over uh you know kirk's enterprise you just didn't didn't see them in the 60s yep 
boy, you, you, that's, that's touchy though to dance around that. Yeah. It'd be really interesting if they had a Trek series where they had an unrealistic taboo where like, ah, oh, we don't like right-handed people here. We have this conversion therapy process you can take down here. Yeah. In sick bay. Well, you could go to a planet where that's the case, but I mean, you, you, they want to have it look like everybody on the starship is, you know, quote baseline normal, which is one of the things that I really like about discovery is that you have this kind of this, you know, this queer family on the ship. Now it's like a, you know, a family of four, which includes a trill. Yeah. Hey, I was right. Um, the 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 pulsating trill with the air bladder in this episode, uh-huh. they used a, a black light to nice. get all the colors pop. So there was a kiss on the wrist. That's as close as we're going to get. Yeah. Beverly sad. I am sad. Yeah. I I hated this episode so much. <laughs> <laughs> wasted a lot of wasted potential oh well but we did it we got it yep. under our belts so <clears throat> two and a half black light films right so here's what i want to know why was this such a beverly centered episode why her because originally the story was about um a trill doing negotiations and the the negotiations not go, going so well and the the trail having um medical problems so, and then all of a sudden they turned it into a love story so like why why did a love story sell better than the the political thriller i think people like love stories and we've had we've had quite a few political thrillers our next episode is a political thriller um <clears throat> And it was nice to see, especially after what I know, like continuity is pretty loose on this show, but especially when Crusher is ever so subtly trying to open Picard up to being in a relationship with her mm-hmm. and seeing that like he can just get with whoever comes on the ship um, and then be, you know, kind of a wuss about it. She's like, you know what? I could do this, too. I think that having her fall head over heels in love with Odan, that I don't like. Because mm. I think that it, and again, you can, couldn't really do it in um, 2000 or in 1991. Because I mean, the, the implication was was that this was going to be her forever part. Yes, he finally found someone again. And we just didn't see enough to, to cement that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, um, so you're almost saying it, it had a you're almost saying it had a really poor foundation to begin with. Yeah. Yeah. Particularly since we're since we later find since they like this species, the trill so much, and built them up as having been part of Starfleet at this time, that, you know, Troy couldn't say to her, you know, a relationship with a trill, you really doesn't work because you know once they get a new host, they can't keep those romantic entanglements. Mm-hmm. They're done. They can't go back. Maybe it would have helped the episode a lot more if we showed the getting to know you phase between these folks. So, yep. Odan laid out all the rules about what it's like to be in a relationship really with the trill and say, "Are you prepared for this?" And then go through the tragedy and the drama, and then Will say uh, the Odin will starts breaking some of those rules in order to stay with Beverly, rather than call off the relationship. Uh, that's that's the tr- that's the controversy. I think the viewer really want to see is uh, when people are breaking their own personal code of conduct for the the thrill of it. Um, that's the the temptation goes really far in my opinion so anyway uh with that i give it um 1.5 sluggos <laughs> sluggos uh, i'm not a fan I, I i really struggled with this episode so 
But what we do have coming up next, I believe, is The Mind's Eye. And yeah. that, that is where Jordy gets kidnapped by Romulans to get state secrets. And that's exactly the kind of Star Trek I love to watch. So with that, please make sure to join us uh, for that one as well. I believe it comes out May 27th. Um, and that, uh, let's say, have a wonderful day. So you're the guest. So Sasha, what's so, a Star Trek? Hi, I am the guest. So Sasha, what is Star Trek? <laughs> and, uh, right. Seek us out at Next Generation's First Generation at iTunes, Google Play, and YouTube. Music credits include Electric Car by Poddington Bear, Broke for Free, As Colorful as Ever, Class Android, and Telecom by Lee Rosevier. Audio Engineering by Sasha Shouties. Chief Meme Maker and Episode Cover Credit goes to Matthew Kirshner. Logo and Graphic Art Design Credit goes to David Clawwitter. And special thanks to Patrick Delmore for working with other podcasts to make sure the good word gets out. If you'd like to email the show, you can email us at nextgenfirstgenpod at gmail.com. I've been Patrick Delmore. And this is Sasha Shouties. Thank you very much for listening and have a wonderful day. Good night.